Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Boo. The sound was that from high school. The sounds. I yeah probably I don't even I don't remember. I just remember doing it and like at one point in my life, like doing really loud, like where yeah. you pull it down from the yeah. suction from the roof of your mouth, your tongue. Yeah. And like being really good, like trying to get it like loud as you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We we used to do that finger snap thing. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and it was like I I don't really get like. And the same thing, like you try and get the loudest snap yeah. that you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't it was like, wh- who came up with that? Like, what the fuck is the point of that? It wasn't until years and years outside of high school when I was in North Carolina. <laughs> of all places. Uh, yeah. I saw a guy with a can of skull. Oh, it was a chaw thing where it, you're packing it. And it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's to condense the t- uh, chewing tobacco at the bottom of the can. Right. And if you're holding it essentially in the same way, your finger slaps the can. Yes. But if you're a, an so ignorant you a- kid in high school, you're just like, oh, yeah, check me <laughs> out. Fucking snap. And you're like, why are you doing that? Because it's snap. No. You idiot. Well, you're you probably gotta, pulling it because your dad chews tobacco. <laughs> yeah, you, you're trying to pack the tobacco so you can get a good pinch. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we did that too, but it, I, <laughs> it's so funny that I never really thought about it. Or maybe I did then. I don't know. And it was weird too is that I. Uh, uh, my dad chewed tobacco for the longest time. He would yeah. never. Sm- well, as long as I was around, I never saw my dad smoke. Uh, my just the hippie lettuce. Yeah, no shit, no not even that. Uh, no. uh, my un- two uncles and the aunt on that side both t- smoked chimneys. Oh yeah, for a-, a while, as long as I was a young, like uh, probably started to wane off near high school. <laughs> But they were still smoking. I still remember them smoking. Uh, and But never saw my dad smoke or one other uncle. Never saw him smoke either. But he was always struggling with health issues. But in Grass Valley, I remember tins of chewing tobacco. Um, and I never, never <clears throat> saw him doing the snap right. shit. Never saw Maybe it. Maybe he's skull bandits. I got I that yeah. <laughs> the ones no. that were the yeah. little packs no. already. His, packed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried those. I never. And like uh, I'm not a packing guy and I don't know what the fuck's going on. And someone handed me a a skull bandit. Uh-huh. It was like you just uh, you stick it in there. I'm like I don't know what the fuck is supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm like wh- well, if you swallow too much, you get green and throw up. I f- <laughs> Yeah. It's a lot, a lot like probably my first cigarette or so. It was like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing with right. this. Like I, and I don't want to embarrass myself and start choking and dying. So it was like, that's why cigars were so awesome later on in adult life. Once I had figured out the proper way to smoke, right? Uh, once or twice in a blue moon. But cigars, you don't inhale, right? So it was You're like, just puffing on. Oh, I enjoy the, I enjoyed. Some cigars taste that there was a taste that was tolerable. I never got a nicotine thing from a cigar, so one of my friends did. Huh. Like he got like mildly addicted, zipped, oh. well, n- n- zippy, zippy, like a nicotine yeah, punch, like a little, yeah. little pep, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for him, there was something tangible that was different once he had smoked. A, a, a full, a good, good size cigar. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know. Eh. The only time I ever bought a cigar was for one of my Halloween costumes. <laughs> oh. At that, oh yeah. There's that smoke shop over there on uh, Roseville Parkway. Yeah. By the. <laughs> It's right next to the the kitty corral <laughs> like oh, place. Oh wow! That's you know dangerous. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like down the street from Safeway. Yeah. And uh, w- I was like, oh, there's a smoke shop in there. I'm going to go try and get just a cheap cigar. I'm, and I go in there just like, I mean, I've never bought any tobacco product ever. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I just, 
I, I don't buy. I don't use any of this stuff. I just need a cheap cigar for a costume. <laughs> no, yeah. I was like, oh. well, these are like three or four bucks. I'm like, fine. You yeah, know, give me, there you go. Give me one. There you go. But uh, did I remember <laughs> distinctly? Okay, uh, sixth grade, which was our transition from sixth grade to seventh grade, which you're going from elementary school to junior high. Yeah, and riding the bus from sixth grade to seventh grade for like. The orientation or whatever. Uh huh. Um, you did like a little tour of the junior high. Yeah. And being in the back of the bus with a bunch of other guys, and they were like, "Here, have some uh, snuff." Yeah. Right. With the, you tap it out and snuff it. Okay. And I, I wasn't into that shit at all. No. No. no I, myth. That, some any tobacco. I was around enough tobacco growing up. Everybody in my family smoked cigarettes for sure yeah and some of them were pipe smokers you know what i mean yeah and pipes the same way like i i don't i i didn't need any more tobacco yeah i i could i smoked a share of cigarettes never amounting to the numbers of even a pack Uh there was just nothing nothing appealing about it and the smell also not appealing to me yeah uh, there is something about a cigar smell that I enjoy some some variants. Uh, I th- I find them interesting. Yeah. Um, pipe tobacco is the same way. I would almost say I would rather smoke uh, a really good pipe tobacco even over a cigar. And even then, that is few and far between, and I'm much more interested in the pipes uh-huh. of a pipe tobacco. Right. Because they're they're like uh, like um, fucking trading cards or collectibles. Like, like they're so they're cool smoke, knives. Actually, smoking guns, uh, smoking tobacco in a pipe is a whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah it's like you got to get out the pipe, and then you got to pack the pipe. Yeah, and the lighting yeah. of the pipe, and the puffing, and the and then keeping it, and, and then the cleaning of the pipe. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm down with this. <laughs> there's some serious mechanics. <laughs> And the procedure here. Yeah. And if it fucking doesn't work, it's probably because you fucked up a step somewhere along the way. That's on you. But yeah. like a cigarette. Yeah. yeah. And also, I have to say, uh, they're called pipe cleaners for a reason. Yeah. Because they clean, clean literally the clean the pipes. Uh, and that's funny too, because a ways back when um, Toast and Ted were real into the DIY making of the vapes with, like, the Egyptian cotton oh, yeah. and the winding of the coils and the voltage of the batteries. Yeah. I found that so... I'm like, I would make a, a vape... <laughs> just to... Just, just to... Make it. Make it. Uh-huh. I'm like, fuck it, I don't need this. I don't, I don't smoke, but I would make it just to say, uh, you know, the quadcopters are essentially close to the same way. It's like, yeah. I, I've flown the quadcopters a couple times nowhere near as much as i would like to but the act and the um the the making of it the process yeah Yeah. it's it's super interesting i love you know the motors and the the wiring and the controller and the uh, the transmitter and the receiver and all that stuff uh interest interests me way more than well i don't really have time to fly it but it was I I got 50 60 hours into building it and I enjoyed every minute of that. That yeah. was that was super entertaining. I I was looking at like as as Toast and Ted, hashtag hi Ted, were were talking about those at length. Yeah. In some of the the originals had that to hang out. It was like fuck, well, I'm t- taking notes on the merchants that they're like, okay, so you can get Egyptian <laughs> cotton here, and then you pull it apart. Ooh, okay, so then you use this jig but, I mean, to do the winding of the coil. You're doing all that work for nothing, though. Right, I would just fucking give it away. Here you go, guys. Like, hey, Mike, you need a new yeah. fucking vape machine or whatever these are. Vape machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a V8. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I've done a whole valve job on it. This it's, one I used to, it's I good. did it with a steam engine. Yeah, it's, it's got new cams. Yeah, it's cool. It's good. It's, you know, it's hot. It's, yeah. Uh, it runs coal. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good Solar. luck getting some of that, but hey, you know, it's one puff and then done because it's got a lot of a huge throttle body. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's that stuff's just interesting when I think back on the day. Like, I used to like in high school, like go out right at night or on the weekend, and then come home 
and my parents would be chilling on the couch watching TV or whatever. And you could walk into the bedroom and see the layer of smoke in the house and like look above it. Oh, it was yeah, like no it, thanks. It was like the low low clouds of it was like fog in the house. You could look above it and look below it and you'd be like, what the hell? And it would just sit in the house and you could like walk under it. No. <laughs> yeah, that's too much for me. It was so gross. So gross. Anyway. Yeah. Don't don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, I've I dodged a lot of that. Uh, my brother was different. My brother smoked, smoked, smoke. Yeah. Was he on fire a lot? A lot. Oh. Uh, I can't remember. It might've been his stint in Florida. I think he wrapped it up, uh, in there. Mm. It, you know, it's I think huge. Florida, it sink. Florida will, uh, cure anybody of smoking. Yeah. You throw a couple hurricanes at a guy and, <laughs> and shit starts to get real. That's what, okay. And you just hit on a thing about the cost because, Smoking is really expensive. Like what's a yes. like a pack is like five bucks or something, right? Or I have six no bucks. idea. This I feel like this would get us into problems talking about costs we don't know. Like <laughs> asking a presidential candidate I, what a gallon of milk costs. I want to say it's like between four and six dollars for a pack of cigarettes. To I don't know. I'm guessing uh, from what I saw last time. Uh, what is it? A liquor store? But it's and my mom. I remember buying that. She would buy cartons of cigarettes. I remember and that's back then. Yeah, I, I honestly think it's it's higher. Oh, it's way higher now. Yeah, because so of all the think, extra taxes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember, like, she would buy the cartons that came with like blue chip stamps or something inside them, and she would collect the stamps. Okay. And then you would have to take these sheets of stamps and like put them in a stamp book, and then the stamp book you would you would collect enough stamps that you would take the stamps to this stamp rede- redemption kind of place. Okay. And you could exchange them for things. Like goods. Oh, like the like, like uh, this, this General thing is, Mills cereal box tops shit. Kind, for I mean, kind, no. No, like you, you'd be like, oh, I, I wanted a new, uh, I don't know, toaster. And Sony it, Walkman. It was 45,000 stamps or some shit. So they had, yeah. So you know they, it I mean? was like box tops for oh, nicotine yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or soup can. Because I remember going to like the blue chip stamp redemption store with her as a kid. Like, Holy shit. I don't even, I don't think that's even a thing anymore. You know? I, I mean, I would highly doubt it. Yeah. It would be highly frowned, up, frowned upon nowadays. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> trying to it's so you, bizarre. keep smoking pack. I mean, it's probably illegal. Yeah, you keep smoking. Get yourself a free Sony Discman. Oh You're yeah. Like, oh well, okay. <laughs> well, the thing of it is, is the amount of money that you spent on cigarettes, you could have easily just gone and bought the yeah, toaster. Just go buy an iPod. You'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, you could have just bought one without a problem. Yeah, For and thinking much- probably the amount of gas burned in going to get <laughs> a, an overpriced. Oh, yeah, in a giant 73 Plymouth Fury V8. Did they have lighters, or were they always matches? Because then you have oh, that, lighters, too. Oh, lighters. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, be dang. Yeah. Yeah. But- okay. Wait, anyway, wait. Okay. So I just ran into this the other day. Well, welcome to the show, everyone. Hey. Well, <laughs> Before we get yeah. into that Dude. thought. <laughs> bang, 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 all cylinders. No masks. We're just fucking out here. Yeah, we don't have any masks on. We're just spreading it today. Sad Dad's Club Podcast, episode 173. I'm the Lord Fu. And I'm Jim. And we're talking about okay. smoking. Okay, smoking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll tear off some Band-Aids and we'll, we'll go deep. <laughs> yeah, let's try it. <laughs> okay, so here, here's- I got a, one right here. A pain point I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I was casting some resin stuff. Uh, coasters for my dad for Christmas, so I'm uh-huh. doing the bar top epoxy. And one of the things to pop if you overmix and end up with air bubbles in your epoxy is to run like a, a torch over the top, and it'll pop the bubbles for you kind of yeah. thing. Because they kind of come to the surface, and you're just trying to get them to break. Right, so they you don't can't touch a, it, yeah. so it, the heat will pop the bubble. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up buying a an affordable... Uh, like creme brulee torch, but I'm u- leveraging it as a crafting torch. It runs on the butane gas. Is this me, or does this happen to you? In filling, I have like a, bought from a Walmart or something, like a, a Zippo butane with a like a needle point filler. Uh, okay. You turn it over. Uh-huh. 
the instructions to fill it are essentially you rinse and repeat a plunging action and it fills up the right and if you're watching the youtube episode (laughs) man this is gold so you in like a quick repeated fashion you you dunk the uh, until the stuff comes out Right. Now, in my case, here's the problem I have <laughs> until the stuff comes out. Yeah. And you just got to make sure you shield your eyes right. and have a towel handy. <laughs> if you're like me, I seem to get I don't spray. <laughs> like, even on the first plunge. <laughs> and I assure you, this doesn't apply to anywhere else I... but refilling the butane torch. <laughs> or so the Germans would have uh, Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, you know... Is there supposed to be this? <laughs> I don't know. Gratuitous overflow? Is it? <laughs> I don't have any butane things. Really? Yeah. No, really, I don't. Like a. Oh. My well, mom says I'll to... burn down my house. I mean, it's this I'm shit got, got I just don't all have over yeah. my hand, and it's it's not like that. Like when you turn a compressed air can upside down and you get the cold burn. It's not that like intense. Yeah, right. But. It's obviously it evaporates really. F- it evaporates really fast. Yeah, and this stuff, like, I'm concerned that the bulk of it is actually ending up everywhere but inside the filler thing. So I'm looking at because I've just mm-hmm. taken this on faith that because I I've had zip butane zippos yeah. before and that's how I filled it, but it seemed like. Uh, working with the Zippo and something a little bit smaller didn't quite seem so overflowy. But I had other creme brulee torches that kind of did the same thing. You start, fuck yeah, dog. <laughs> you got the you got you're holding the football number hold, one. Hold, yeah, <laughs> so you're you're doing the dunk thing, <laughs> and it just starts spilling out. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm confused. So I, if you don't know now, <laughs> I just have to just continue to describe it because I'm like. This has been years in the making. Like I have been doing this for years, and okay. always like <laughs> something is not right. Am I? Am I doing? Now there, wait a second. There's is, no. I assume there's directions of some kind. No. Oh, there is not. All right. So here's the thing. I'm gonna say we're in the year twenty something. Yeah. Right? We have an internet. Yes. Okay. So that's where I I finally <laughs> broke down after like getting this stuff because I've got the. The epoxy setting, the torch came to me. Obviously, no gas because that's not allowed in California. Right. And you can't buy the butane fuel tanks okay. uh, off Amazon to ship into California because apparently oh. that. So, but I have one anyway. Well, wait. So it wouldn't come with fuel. What's the point of having if you can't buy the fuel anywhere? No, you can't buy it shipped. Oh, you, you have can't to buy ship it, it in a container oh. so you got to go buy it local but so they i don't want a ups truck so it wasn't up. like my torch was going to come pre-fueled right. i was going to have to f- fill it which i had right. so okay but i am in this position where i'm like oh okay i wonder if it's going to do that thing like uh, months back when i was filling that other thing and sure shit um and it it's burbling all over the place my hand has got for sure more butane fluid on it uh-huh. than inside the torque. You just light your hands on fire. And at I'm that like, point. <sighs> set everything down, got in my chair, swung around. How to fill butane lighter? And yes, it is. It is literally a f- fucking mess. It, oh, and I'm like, why? why? Yeah, that seems uh, quite wasteful. Well, yeah, I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> there is more in it than than evaporated how is into this the even, ether. How is this even possible? Like, I don't understand how. I don't understand. Maybe after the show, you're gonna have to show me these uh, yeah. bits. Yeah, because It'll I don't take five seconds, and I'll get my hand will get well, fro- no, I don't mean, frozen like the T1000. I don't mean that, but I mean like, like, how does it come out if you're got a needle that's squirting it in? I don't understand. I, I, um, it almost functions like a pressure differential. So the the stuff in the can is higher pressure. So as you oh. push it against the fill nozzle on the torch itself, uh-huh. you create a high pressure, low pressure. Uh-huh. And I think it shoots some amount, a fraction, I think, into the tank, and then you release it, 
and you kind of like rinse and repeat because it's not like a can of hairspray where if like you push and hold it, yeah. it continues to dump in. At least that's so you're creating the pressure. You create with your so you action. pump it in, pump it in, <laughs> pump it in, uh-huh. and then there's smiles for everybody, and, and you go take a shower. And you go smoke a cigarette, yeah, and then you go <laughs> fucking light something on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and was hope, that as good for you as and, it was for me. And hope she had a great time too, you know, which is always the case. Uh, I mean, was that okay for you? How was it? I'm like, fuck. I She's hope. like, it was very messy. I'm, uh, yeah. There's, I need a wet nap. Can you go get several and, towels, please? And some sort of sterilization <laughs> fluid. And keep that heat source away for you, at least oh, now. Yeah. And. Do not light anything <laughs> in this room. Oh my God, it's feral in here. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, that's one way to shave down yeah. there, you know? Jesus, you, you could spend tens of thousands of dollars over the course of your lifetime on manscaping techniques, or <laughs> you could just butane it off. Just butane your fucking crotch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean there ball. It goes. There it is. It Done. only smells for a second. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I put Vicks Vapor Rub on my upper lip. Shit, we're good to go. I, you know, it's one of those things that, like, I can't believe I'm actually looking this up on the internet. I feel like the person that and would it's... know best is Dave. <laughs> we have to ask Dave now. Oh. Does he have, a, is there a special way that he knows of to refill butane things without spilling Why? it? Why? Does Dave smoke? No, but I, he knows all this stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Dave knows. Yeah. It's just like meth. <laughs> yeah. What? Wait. Huh? Jesus. <laughs> shit, Dave. What are you trying? No. <laughs> Hashtag we love you, Dave. <laughs> Uh, no, he would know. I mean, I feel like that guy, if anyone's going to know, Dave's going to know for sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. if not that, we'll just ask about an oil filter or something. Hey, I speaking of that, I actually bought the Fram Ultra, which Dave recommended, and they have it. They just carry it at Walmart. They have Fram Ultra oh, filters yeah. at Walmart. It was eight bucks. And I was like, sweet, that's cheap. I was... It, Amongst the other conversation where we were talking about today, yeah. that Dave wound back around. Yeah. I, I've been trying to kick around, like, what is something Jeep like mechanic that I can, like, fix on a smaller budget and, uh-huh. and perhaps record it as, like, pilot? So I'm looking at the Raptor and uh, the oh. quad. And so I'm thinking, because that was something that Dave, I think Dave has a newer. Oh, so you're talking about the side by side? Mine single, but oh. I, that's where I'm getting. Okay. Uh, weeks back, anyway. So I'm thinking of Raptor as a project, film it as a pilot for uh, another thing, and I recalled that Dave had one. He he has a side by side. Oh, okay. But he knew I, of me because I think he was talking about like he knew the one that was fuel injected. Oh. Anyway, so we had a conversation about it. He yeah, knew yeah. of what the Raptor was, you know, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had been up there talking about side by side. Yeah. And it was weeks ago. So I think we we're talking about something. And uh, we we're good friends with Piper. It was around the, just before Christmas and the holidays. And. I think I posted something even this evening about like surround yourself with good people that y- you know add to your experience and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And the Raptor and the side by side thing triggered a uh, something that I mentioned in our Discord the other day. I'm like, I you were I, connecting dots. I was not. I have not jumped a side by side. But I would love to. Yeah. And Dave's the only person that I know <laughs> within reason that has a side by side. Right. And I'm like, I wonder if does as as enthusiastic and, and involved as Dave is with his boats, like does Dave I mean he's Dave, got like two quads and a side by side. We need like a stasis period of COVID so we can get Dave because yeah. I would really like to jump a side by side. And more importantly, so here's the thing. Yeah. The, I have a couple pictures, which I think I haven't shared in years, but you've probably seen it and maybe forgot or maybe remember. Uh, when, when what is Blue Oaks Theater now over there yeah. used to be like 
uh, vacant, unused, unmanaged space. It was people would take their quads and dirt bikes over there and ride and hoon around. Right. There is a picture of me getting 10 to 15 feet of air on like a 20 to 30. St- I mean, it, it is a huge jump. Really? I am way in the air. On a motorcycle? On a on my, it oh, was a, a Honda 660 at the time. Uh, Honda 600. Oh, damn. Um, A grotesque amount of air. And there is, uh, we've talked about it before, like for me, um, motorcycles are close. But the driving experience and that, like um, the flow, yeah, in the RS, four in, wheels in the Subaru, <laughs> yeah, the motorcycles are close. But I am even there's even cl- a closer flow on the on a quad, and the jumping of a four wheeled vehicle that's intended to be jumped, uh, is not your daily is one of those things where I would love to be have the time to do that again. Yeah, there is something. No, no training. No, I have probably less than two hundred hours easy. Probably even less than a hundred hours on a quad, and I put that thing with maybe tens of hours into the air. <laughs> with 100% confidence, 100% control, like what would happen if I did this? Yeah. Uh an amazing experience. And I'm like I would love to see what would happen if if in a side by side I had someone next to me. <laughs> like how would that go? I feel like I experienced like, this one time playing Ingress with you. Oh, the <laughs> But in the in the Subaru. Georgetown run, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or McCourt or Dad's. No, well, that I mean that one too. But yes, yeah, the, the time I got in your car and said you don't have to impress me, and, yeah. like, mm-hmm. and then I was just like, oh shit, no buttholes. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. uh, I I would like to see what what is how the driving feel and balance is in a side by side. You know, I Just feel like that's bigger, the next, a little heavier, little next progression. Yeah, like uh, the older, I probably don't need, and I would like to take, you know, the uh, a kid or a, or a partner who's perhaps not going to ride it or drive it like I would, but would enjoy the experience of I am never going to jump this thing. You just go down but, to but Pismo. Show, yeah, show me. Do do take me out. Go to the dunes in Pismo. Ride me hard. Put me way wet. Oh, whoa! Well, that's what your wife said earlier when she yeah, was walking out of the garage. Ah, fish sauce. <laughs> Taste that fish sauce. <laughs> Shit, it's oh dinner, dinner time. We just went now. way south. Way. That's way south. Way. We in the deep south yeah. now. Uh, side by sides. Hmm. Does that interest you at all? Uh, they're interesting. Yeah, they're more interesting than motorcycles. I just have very yeah. little interest in motorcycles. Um, and I, I'm not a dirt bike guy. Yeah. E- either. Uh, motor, uh, I, street motorcycles. I love. I, I have more interest in the design and look of a motorcycle. I think they're gorgeous. I think, like Mike's new bike is a gorgeous piece of machinery. Oh yeah. Uh, and all that, but man, I just have way too much respect for riding them. And oh yeah, I don't want to. I, I'm scared shitless of yeah of them. So I I could never really get confident on a dirt bike. Mm. It it just wasn't my thing. I the but the moment I had a quad, uh, I I did shit mm-hmm. blind and way outside of a wheelhouse that I should have been with the amount of experience that I had on it and felt like. I was meant to be here. This is okay. Like, uh, very bizarre because everyone around me had dirt bikes, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I had earned enough money to be able to buy something I'm like, well, rather than try and pigeonhole me into something that everyone else has got, uh, this I'll get a trailer. We uh, we had the Durango, so it wasn't like I had a truck. We, you know, I'll have to buy a trailer because right. everyone else and the bikes all fit somewhere else. So I'll buy a trailer. Um, 
and our small group of guys ended up all kind of, uh, I think we had, Grant had a quad. Uh, John had a, it was, jo John's was fun, uh, Colfax John mm -hmm. was always funny because he ended up buying like the utility, like the uh -huh. uh, the rancher style uh -huh. shit. With, and like, it, with like the wire rack on it? Yeah. And yeah. it was just like, <laughs> uh, fun to do donuts in. <laughs> sure. But you ain't jumping it. I tried. It's it's not happening. It's just not built that way. Yeah. Um, They're for hauling logs out of the. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plowing the field. And <laughs> 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 it's just a big hauling horse. your kill. Yeah. Yeah. Hook the plow up to my my yeah. mechanical horse. Or you know, uh, like Donna spray weeds. It utility, much yeah. more utility. And there's it's fine in place, but the way I was driving them. It never worked. Yeah. And John was using it. It was a purpose thing for John because he was doing uh, yard uh, work, BLM land claiming in uh, Nevada. So he needed something sagebrush and you know sport quad, you know. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. Um, and Ian had a dirt bike, and it was like one of those things. Like you, you want to when we get out to Blue Oaks, they want to ro rotate around. I, I don't want to sit on that fucking thing. I'm like no. <laughs> You kidding me? I don't. I don't know. Dana's uh, had a <clears throat> couple of good friends that had dirt bikes, so he would go up to where's that? Like mm, Yuba City, whatever Marysville, mm -hmm. that that place by the bridge. Oh yeah, <clears throat> he would go ride there with them all the time. Um, and I think there were a couple other places they went, but I was, I don't know. Early on, like something terrified me about motorcycles, so I've just stayed away. Yeah. Uh, just. I don't know. And then I haven't had the opportunity uh, to do any side-by-side -side stuff. I don't know anyone that owns one. It's just never been, yeah. you know. Well, and there's two. It's like, you know, if you're going to, like, borrow someone's. It's like, well, I, how, that's the how, kind of thing I wouldn't borrow. Right. Well, or, I mean, like, if you're all going to go out or something. Oh. Like, oh, let's go oh, out to yeah. Sugar Pine and... Hey, Everybody want, shows up with their stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Hey, you want to drive this? Yeah. You know, and you're like, uh, okay, but you know, you're yeah. never going to. You're not going to put it through its paces like as if it was your right. Yeah. right, 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 yeah, right. yeah, right. You know, uh, I don't know. I just haven't been. I had a in, really good friend. Like, man, we're going all the way back to sixth grade again. In sixth grade, he got for Christmas. He got like a. It was a Honda or Suzuki motorcycle. Oh, okay. A uh, little dirt bike. Yeah. And his his neighborhood, his street, uh, you came out of his garage, and it was like three or four doors down down the street was the end, and it just was like a fence with like a little hill. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the hill is what is now Phoenix Field Houses. Okay. And it was Phoenix Field, which used to be uh, used to be an airport yeah. in Fair Oaks. Uh, well, the airport closed for a number of years, and so it was just an empty field, and the people would go out there and ride dirt bikes. So that was just r literally four doors down from his house. So he yeah. would just ride out, go down the street, and pop over the thing, and he was in the field of berms and jumps and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would go hang out with him, but I never had the opportunity to ride, and I don't think – I think my mom kind of didn't want me to ride the motorcycle. Yeah. It was kind of one of those things, and yeah, I'm yeah. not – I wasn't the kind of kid that was like, fuck you, man. I'm just going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just had way too much respect for motorcycles in general. And I watched Brent bail on that thing hard several times, you know, come back running. I just dumped the bike, you know, and then mm -hmm. have to help him get it picked up. And Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just never really had the opportunity. Whatever, yeah. you know. I would go do quad stuff easy. I'm God, be yeah. more comfortable with it probably. We had uh we were out. I can't remember who was there. I uh, my brother was there for sure cuz where I'm going is what uh, was a picture. Um I think it was Forest Hill somewhere. It was a trail thing. I really enjoyed like really if I had if I had to choose it, like the um the Prairie City like the tracks uh -huh. with the tabletops and whatnot. Right. I enjoy trail riding cuz you can get out and in some places you just stretch the legs and, and you're, you know, pull off and do donut or some shit, or you're drifting through a gravel. Uh, it's good fun. Uh -huh. But I really enjoyed the, like a motocross track, that track that's off baseline when it was oh, in yeah. its, when it was in its prime and yeah. someone was actually using it. Was I can't, it fun? I can't, no, 
Oh. I can't tell you how many times I, I was, in, I was in sad dad mode at that point. <laughs> like, the amount of times it crossed my mind to, like, pull off and be like, hey, I'll sign whatever you want. Yeah. Could I just, just do it? me? I just want to go around. I, I? 50%. I just really want to jump that. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. We were out in doing trail stuff out in Forest Hill, and my brother was there, and we were running past it was like a small pond and the shore of this pond was just it was muddy as fuck so it was like perfect for just you come in hot yeah and you lock up the front Burr. and things get sideways and then you goose it and mud everywhere and yeah. on everything yeah uh we ended up for whatever dumbass reason he's got I can't remember whose quad he's on. My brother was on, but for whatever dumbass reason, I'm standing behind oh, no. behind him. And the the picture I just called, uh, I named it. The file name is Mud Tai Chi, and I'm just standing on like Morpheus, like a come come get it kind of thing. Uh-huh. And he is roosting the shit out of me with mud. <laughs> Absolute dumb idea. You're right? Don't do it because you never know if a rock oh, yeah. or something. But it's one of those like iconic pictures in my mind that I remember sharing with my brother. Like, come, come, do this experience with me, and for what? And he's just roosting the shit out of me with mud. Yeah, uh, I can't remember where it is, but mud tai chi dot jpeg is the name of the file. Like, can't forget it. Right, burned in. That's I, fun. If we had. I was just talking with Venus because this kind of transitioned to like a sort of a next thing. Uh, we were talking about like lotto stuff the other day, like the big Powerball and the Mega Millions. The wouldn't it be nices? Yeah. Yeah. It, um, we were pulling in, Venus and I were pulling into the grocery store and there was a Jeep like across from us, like you know, some aftermarket stuff, but it was missing something. I can't remember. So we're, we're chatting about it. I, and I was telling her, I said, it, it's hard to. To not have like the like a sad dad thing. It's like the it's not buying a used Jeep or even probably like a side by side or something like that. Um, to be honest, it's probably not too far off like unobtainium right. as far as like its cost. You you couldn't pay for it outright, but as a project, it's there. So what happens is after fixing Je- Emily's. There's like this kind of like splinter in my mind of that was that was really fun. Yeah. That was a, a really great learning experience. And you you get on like a Facebook marketplace and you type in Wrangler and you see these things that are like that's that's not too bad. Right. Uh we're, as we're continuing to walk in, and it's like it's that lotto thing. It's like uh, if I were, t- if you were to win, and the things that you would get, and the things that you would do, but you wouldn't necessarily have any more time potentially because we're still parents. We st- the kids still need to, you. You can't just disconnect and you. You do would stuff. have more time because you probably wouldn't be working every day. Probably, <laughs> but the ability to the you know, I would want people to participate with me. Yeah. Well, kind no, of, no, kind I of a mean, thing. You so, would be more free and more willing to go do stuff on the weekends. R- sure, if absolutely. You weren't working right. all week, but then I'm, it, it, it transitioned. That the subject kind of transitioned into the Jeep thing, and it was this. This seems to interest me. This seems to be a passion. Like I, I could do this. The cost would suck, right? Mm-hmm. It's not free. Uh, yeah. But then the reality of the, the other parts of responsibilities as as a, a husband as a dad as a an employer or employee uh start to well I would have this thing now I I could probably make the cost work and I would have this thing but I wouldn't probably necessarily have all the time to fix it and then the added cost of the parts that I would want to put on it and then once I had it I probably wouldn't have the time to use it. Well, you know, all of those things. It's like, well, so, so you, it's one it's the trade-off, right? Yes. You you have to consciously be like, I'm doing I'm working on the Jeep. 
you know, right. I, you know, everything else be damned. This is where I'm going to be spending my time. Right. I know I have X, Y, and Z. Those aren't going to be gotten to the, today and tomorrow or whatever it is, or this weekend. Right. And so you're, you're now making that decision because the alternative thing is that you're buying this project thing and then making the decision that other stuff is going to take precedent. And then that thing is just never going to happen. Right. It's never going to happen the what well, that, you yeah, want. That's the yeah. the juggling problem that I our conversation stemmed from. Yeah. It's like the you know Piper in college and and Xander's probably going to need a car too and the insurance and the you know paying for tuition for yeah. these and uh, de- vacations for this and things that Venus and I would like to do. Yeah, you know, it's like. But because the cost is like right in that sweet sweet spot, uh-huh. it becomes this like I can't let it go because there's a there's a maybe. Yeah. But it's like there's there there makes no Does it have to res- be a Jeep though? Uh could it be like a Suzuki Samurai or something like that? I feel like I I mean it could, but the pickings are a lot less. That's true. But I mean, talk about something you could work on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Well, in the Jeep itself is like the microcosm of you uh, know, cheap it, parts. It's, it's like, well, the Z could work too. But that's the, true. Uh, you know, and that's why it's like, well, yeah, but the the time sink and the cost of okay. un, unknowns still becomes You and a thing. I watch a YouTube channel called Mighty Car Mods. Yes. And what, and they're still into sports cars and fast cars and, you know, making things do skids. Yes. <clears throat> but we've seen this year sp- specifically them sort of, they're not, they haven't transitioned, but they have taken a step away from the normal things and have gone into the four by four world. And it's a different kind of world than the speed world. The four by four world is about just kind of getting away and hanging out. Yeah. Where the speed world is, competition blah 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 there's a lot of money involved in doing that kind of stuff yeah i am more interested in to be quite honest in the other world the off the off-roading sort of chill and go hang out and that i would rather do that than like i mean it's one thing to get just your you know like the z right get it up and running you know, fix, you know yeah buy parts and put parts on it get the motor working that kind of stuff uh, it would take a pretty big investment to make it like a road racer or you right. know, yeah. X, Y, Z type race car. Uh, there's something there. That's definitely a project that you should take on. I think is the getting the Z. We, you've talked about yeah, it a yeah. lot. Yeah. And I would see, I would love to see that happen. I would help you wrench on that anytime. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but as far as like being able to hang out with, Get in these things that you can modify on your own, and go to the mountains or yeah, go right. fishing or yeah. ex, you know do these yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. Those are all excursiony things that you can do with other folks. Yes, you know what I mean. That's Mike what... wouldn't fit in a samurai. <laughs> That's true. So we well, don't... we could put him on the roof. Yeah, if it's one of those cargo. Yeah. Well, you... that's that's kind yeah. of how I look at that. Yeah, and the the thing that the interesting like a uh, adulting part of the conversation that ended up winding through Venus was, well, pretty soon when Xander's off to college, you know, and I, and I kind of went, yeah, but by the, t- who's, who knows what happens then? Like you have to the, start. Like I want to go right now to snowboarding yeah. with, with Jim and Mike. Yeah. Like go up the hill, we, we find something to, to do that. Uh, Money. I mean, fucking lift tickets are eighty to one hundred and fifty bucks yeah. at this point. So it, there's all these things. I'm like, what? You as, start as putting the off amount these... of money that you make has gone up. So has everything else. Right. Yeah. And then it's well, when when the kids are gone, you know, we'll have more time. But the thing is, is right. now you're fifty or whatever. right. You so know it's what like, I mean? well, my body isn't gonna be. I, you know, hey, I'm 50 and I still want to go snowboarding. Right. And what holds me back from going snowboarding is like the cost is one thing, but what holds me back is the like I 
I must have my own gear. Yeah. I mean, I have rented stuff. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I'm going to go snowboarding on any kind of regularity, I am not going to spend a bunch of money renting gear. I will have my own shit. I will have yeah. my own snowboard. I have my own snowboard. I have you just gotta... the full kit. It's just 1989 shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know if I'd trust those bindings. No, those bindings are shot. Yeah. They've been heated and cooled in the garage for 20-something years now by this time. Yeah. And one was already broken. So that's the reason why that board has sat. Busted. Busted, because... I didn't want to put new bindings on an old board. Yeah, it's like I feel over-responsible sometimes. It's like I see some people around us, not directly around us, but it's like... Going know, and doing. Going and doing. I don't feel bad yeah. about my responsibilities. I right. love everything about my life currently, but it seems like I have an inability to lighten what I feel are some of the duties in order to obtain some of my passion. Or taking your own interests first for right, a change. Right, right. Yeah. I, and I don't begrudge anything. Like, I wouldn't change anything. But I do see it's like, I, I'm so close to this this thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I almost feel guilty sometimes. Like, uh for thinking that you yeah, wanted to do right, that. Right, right. But I got to make sure these boxes are checked first. And yeah. I accept that. That's my de- role as a husband and a dad and, yeah. a, and a friend. It's like, no, I, I'll get you yours, and we'll get there. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I, it doesn't help that the things seem to keep whizzing by. I, w- we had another conversation just the other day about Venus asked me. She said, uh, so down the road, <laughs> uh what kind of dog would you be interested in down the like after? I the, hope your answer was a Chihuahua, Jackson, and and, and <laughs> shiny. And I and I said a poodle. None. Oh, I said I, I'm done. Dogs are a responsibility. You gotta. Well, it was that. Yeah. There's that. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, no, no, no. Like eh, seriously. And Wait, I went, we're just not gonna have a dog. And I said, I, I cannot. I said I've got enough left in me barely to not really think about how this ends with these two it rips me up uh, like armageddon yes was terrible for me right and i can only imagine that it does not get better with for, the, with the with, other two with the ones that are left yeah. i said i don't want to do that anymore i love dogs to pieces i love my dogs to pieces but I, I don't want to do that anymore. She's like, well, we, you know, we would, but it's a small dog that we can take with us. And I said, I'm not that kind of, that doesn't work for my lifestyle. Yeah. I said, I, I don't begrudge people. Like, you, you guys uh, work with Max. Yeah. And, and to the places he can go. Yeah. I said, uh, when I travel, uh, you know, if I'm driving something or whatnot, or in the way that my relationship is with the dogs, those two don't tend to mix like well, well for me i think there's there's different kinds of dogs right? right so it's like you know you have boxers and they are they are a different kind of breed than max is right uh max is very he just will take whatever it is it doesn't matter yeah. like hey lay down on those rocks and be like mm, okay you know like yeah. he's just He's just very malleable in that in that yeah. regard. So it's like if you have the right kind of dog for that situation, then it works. But if you have rambunctious boxers like you have, yes. that's a yes. tougher situation. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking the same exact thing yeah. just recently when I was looking at that cute motherfucker and I thought to myself, This guy is gonna fucking die at some point. Is and he's it, only it, like two and a half or whatever. Yeah. But th- I this guy I'm so attached to him already. Oh yeah, like I'm screwed. I don't, I don't do not like to think about. I didn't. I wasn't happy when Nacho kicked the bucket, and I think yeah. I'm worse off now. With, I, I am worse off. And she, yeah. she was like, "Well, you, you know, we Piper and Xander will be older, and they can come take care of the dogs." And I said, "But what if they, they, 
they're busy and they yeah. they can't. I said, I here's part of the problem with me. I said, uh, I will be unable to treat any size dog any different than how I treat these these dogs. Yeah. I said, so I cannot turn out an can't. animal that will be more independent because I am in capable of it i you enjoy just gotta live laugh love you know what yeah I'm saying? i said th- this is just who i am and i turn out dogs yeah that are codependent yeah and m- myself included on that relationship i i don't, wouldn't trade it for the world yeah but well, I, I i no longer wish to opt into that so she's like yeah. what about a cat and i said fuck that i said <laughs> I would entertain that for a moment. <laughs> so then she, because uh, I'm allergic to cats. Oh, that's right. I for forgot. Some, some, yeah. But I said, but they have hyperallergenic cats or yeah, something. Yeah, they, they just shave them. The, uh, yeah. The the running joke is the hairless cat. Right. Like, well, would you get a hairless cat? I'm like, in the house, it's like, absolutely. But we'll have to name it Scrotum. <laughs> and she's like, ha, ha, ha. but then we're serious, halfway serious about it. Uh-huh. We continued the conversation on the cat, you know, because they're much more independent. They're not, you know. Yeah. And I said, I would kick that around. I, but I gave her some other name of a cat. I'm like, here's, I would be interested in this kind of cat. It's those cute fucking Japanese ones with like no ears. Oh, They're yeah. like really stubby ears. I'm like, yeah. it would have to be that kind of cat. <laughs> that's pretty specific. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's that's what I'll deal with, and it better not make me allergic because... So she knew whatever the brand... The brand. The brand. Yeah. It's a Nike. Yeah. Crispix by <laughs> Kellogg's. Uh, <laughs> she knew wherever it was because I think uh, Taylor Swift has one. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm like, fine. How expensive is that? Is that kind of a cat? And she's looking up stuff, and it's like anywhere between seven hundred and uh, thousand. Jesus. And I went, well, there goes, there goes that. Right. Uh, and then it was, I was like trying to find alternative breeds that were close in look. Uh huh. Because I'm, I, I just don't want like a regular, a regular cat. fucking orange house cat like that. Uh, I want a cute little fucking kawaii. I mean, Nellie's cat. We call her the the woodpile cat because she came literally was like living in a woodpile. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know? I want a scruffy nerf herder type of shit. <laughs> so I'm looking up these these uh, like brands that are like for like to the ah uh, god Scottish something. Anyway, only to find out that the reason those kind of cats that I like are so fucking cute is because they've got some sort of genetic defect. Oh good. And they're apparently illegal to breed if they have this genetic defect, which is why they're so expensive, expensive anyway. You know, because the ones that are out there that don't have the defect, I think you can still breed. Hashtag, when you get here, Kim, just let me know how fucked up I did that. But, <laughs> Scott or something. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Scottish so, egg cats. So they're they're boned genetically. Yeah. Um, and I could not get another Boston. I can't get a French bulldog. I can't get a a pug. You know, all of those have their own a corgi. How about, out, out, out. What out, about out. like a guinea pig? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like a bird. What about a bird? Oh God, like, no! Those are the worst. I would love it, man. The amount it just hangs out in your shoulder all the day. The amount I cuss to have a bird like that in my office during a fucking Zoom call. <laughs> Shit, fucking. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Try rebooting it. <laughs> Windows sucks. There you go. I mean, yeah, uh, good for comedy. Yeah, yeah. Comes out of sock. Yeah. Is that you, Jason? Or <laughs> no, it was my. No, my bird. I swear. It's a, your mouth is moving. It, <laughs> that bird is. That looks like a stuffed animal. Fuck off. <laughs> oh wow. Damn. Yeah, wow. He's salty today. <laughs> He's got a, <laughs> why has he got a anchor tattoo? Yeah, or? that's weird. <laughs> What's that? What's going on? Yeah, so, yeah. I, I I was like. Well, I mean, that's where I was at, like, when Nacho died. Like, I didn't want any dogs. I, I didn't want any dogs because if we wanted to go out of town, it was super easy. Yeah. You know, and that kind of stuff. Um, And then 
Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm looking. I'm yeah. like, I want to do, st- I want to do stuff with you. But and I think the only way to detach myself is to not only from the terminus part that yeah. I do not wish to be a part of anymore. The is to be done, and I, I would not want to pass and outlive the dog. And I, I don't want to outlive a dog anymore. Like yeah. I, I don't want, I don't want to burn. What if the dog outlives you? Yeah, I wouldn't want that either because who's who knows how he's going to take it or she. The way I see it, and I mean, take this for what it is. I have a feeling that like you enjoy your dogs so much that if they, God forbid, were both now gone, that you would want a, you would have you would at some point this sucks. You would get over all that, and then you would be like, fuck, I need a dog. I'm going to live vicariously through my children's animals. <laughs> or I will well, come over and walk Max with you. I I was living vicariously through Melly's cat. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. Then I, and we'll then just I have, to... uh, we'll let the kids get yeah, animals. That didn't work. I ended up with a dog. Yeah, but that's because COVID. They're only back. <laughs> Because COVID, they're and only in fashion because of COVID. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things. My wife saw him on the website and went, "That's the one," <clears throat> you know. And then she called, and then we had to fill. Out, they had to fill out some application. <clears throat> and I'm just thinking, yeah, this is never going to happen. There is probably a hundred people wanting to adopt that dude. Yeah. And then when Shanna went to the website, we didn't even know anything about the dog. She just went to the website to look at him, Mm -hmm. and his listing was down, and she cried. Oh, yeah. She cried. The the dog wasn't even ours. (laughs) We had never even met the dog. She just saw him on the thing, and she was interested. And then when he was gone, she cried. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Not because she's a good person. Like, and here, no, here, no, I'm here not, was my not. litmus test too. Yeah, it was uh, Chandler yeah. posting um, Nicole's. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, They're but, in a. She's in a different right, situation. But that breaks though. like my yeah. my want to f- uh, provide a, a caring home for a, a, a new family member. I mean, you can have a regard- dog in Sun City, right? Uh, what you really? can have a dog in Sun City? <laughs> I might entertain a bulldog that would ride in a side by side in aviator goggles. Oh, there you, that's perfect. Maybe. Yeah, they'll even skateboard. I mean, if it, it just tongue flapping out yeah. as we're catching big air, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you can even teach him to skateboard. So right, it'd you know? probably be better than you. <laughs> he probably would be. <laughs> Yeah, they make little doggy vans and everything. Shit. Little doggy knee pads and a helmet. God damn. So we're out of quarantine. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're out of quarantine? We're out of quarantine. We're out of what quarantine, it? everybody. We were talking earlier yeah. about COVID stuff. Oh, boy. I think you had mentioned. It's coming for everybody. We were talking everybody. about tests. Oh. I can't remember how we how you. I said uh it was what I'd read was that uh, if you have recently had your booster, then you can test positive with an at home. Oh, test. this was like Is a that num- what you're talking about? No, it was oh. a numbers metric. So oh. I pulled up numbers of 100 out of 100 people are going to end up with COVID. Is that, yeah. Was that the number? Yeah, I think because that's where it's headed. That's where it was. So in 2020, December of 2020 was our peak number of average cases per day 299. So this was 2020. In 2021, our peak was 340 in September. So that's probably Delta. In 2020, it was probably the origin of the OG one. <laughs> of the OG. At, yeah. So peak yeah. with less, if not any, vaccines, 299 average per day. Yeah. 2021, Delta peak. 340 average cases per day. This is Placer County. Okay. January, this year, January 10th, the average cases per day. Not even a month into it. 636. Yeah. So this is 
way more pervasive. Like it is no it, joke. I think part of it is that Omicron is really uh super contagious. Contagious. And but the other part of it is is like I think everyone just has COVID despair. Yeah, yeah. They're just like everyone's giving up. Just like right. I'm I gotta live no matter what. Give me that case of cigarettes. Yeah. You know what that's where we're at. And I think uh no one's you go places, no one's wearing masks anymore. I mean, some pe- a lot of people are. Some people do, yeah. But, but. like, it's kind of prevalent now to not wear masks. In fact, it sort of feels like, oh, I'm wearing a mask, and people are probably looking at me funny. Like, why is that guy wearing his mask? Yeah. Why is that guy wearing his mask? Does he not have his shots? Yeah. Did he not get stabbed? Is he, you know? Yeah. Never mind if it's necessary what i would consider be the right thing to do or not yeah but i've been jabbed three times yeah uh, it, it's not it's, helping that it's it's the cases case symptom um outward symptoms yeah are so off the wall as well yeah so you've got the defeatists then you've got the well People are getting way more breakthrough cases than they were with the other one, so why bother? Mm-hmm. And then you've got the breakthrough cases, the no fault of their own, you know, uh, probably wearing a cloth mask instead of like a one of the the good ones, right. given how pervasive Omicron is. Uh, you know, and then you're fucking paste eaters, and then you've got the people that are that are running through the symptoms. Like, oh, well, I know someone that had it, and it was just flu. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll I'm okay. Mm. And then you've got the ones that are that know it, you could get a dice roll and get either right. one. Right. And so you end up with this huge population disparity on the perspective of what do I need to do. Because everything this far along is so across the map yeah. that, you know, there were, there were four or five different perspectives at this, this stage in the game. It makes messaging super hard. Well, like, what's interesting, fuck. we were talking about this earlier, and I know we're going long, uh, but we were talking about how um, it seems more prevalent in the standpoint, from the standpoint of, you were saying, like our twenty-four hour Starbucks down the street, oh yeah, had to close because right. I couldn't staff it, right? Because of COVID, uh, well, I'm hearing things like my the company that Mike and Chandler work for, uh, they're closing branches because they can't staff them, right? Um, and even in the branch that they work in, um, what like a third or a f- a quarter of the the guys that are on an install team are only available to work and everybody yeah. else is home. Yeah. And people that we know have been pretty careful are ending up with it. Yeah. Ha, ha, it raised and, you know, yeah. I mean, not me, but, you yeah. know, in my household. Yeah. And so, pe- yeah. Pe- some of our friends, you know, that, that we uh, talk to on a daily basis, their family has gotten it. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, even today, my son was like, oh, uh, I need a COVID test. And I'm just like, again? Yeah. You know, and so it's this one very seemed, pervasive. Yeah, this one, I think some of the, we're seeing a lot of the, like, the employment fallout that makes this this case spike even more different than it was yeah. prior, was at this point, we at least have probably employers uh, have their ducks in a row as far as the, the legal implications of what they need to do to cover themselves so they're not v- liable if someone comes in positive, right? Yeah. So you've got the, the this far along, now the employers have essentially run books. Like, oh, well, okay, so for we're going to follow CDC stuff on guidelines. So positive? Five days, you're gone. Yeah. Ten days, mask. Or we're, yeah. we're following. And so what that has meant is this black and white for matching a case or a, a, a variant that is so pervasive that y- 
even with your flu, if you test positive, the run book says positive COVID, five days you're gone. Bang. Yeah. And retail, uh, you know, at the mall, Piper, you know, uh, is n- not far off like the Starbucks scenario or even the employer for, for Data and Mike. It's yeah. the retail locations are starting to see the breakthrough where they're following guidelines and that means flat out there's no one left to work like you end up with these outages there's yeah. no way around it uh, i mean shanna was sending me the numbers for the school district that she works in and they are far and away higher than they've ever been um to the point to where her class actually got like kind of closed because of positive cases mm-hmm and then you know one of the moms is upset because her kid's not in school and mm. it's like well the staff has gotten it you know and like no one cares about the teachers and like yeah. people just send all their kids to this one place and like mm. magically all these people are supposed to be safe all the time uh, and yeah. it's not necessarily the case yeah uh, it's it feels like it's coming for all of us i keep saying this over and over it's coming for all of us it really feels like that yeah it's it, it's like closing in the fog is coming you know what i mean yeah <laughs> that's uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> here it comes the reverse fog of war it just yeah. kind of keeps the fog constricting the fog is coming and then beyond the edge of the fog there's the clown guy with the balloon and then as soon as the fog envelops <laughs> you he just fucking hits you in the head and do then you want covid <laughs> All right. <laughs> exactly. Got a popsicle in my pocket full of COVID. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying, you know. I, ref- you know, we, we talked about it in length last week. Yeah. Piper got it. But I, I am of mind that it, it, I am still trying to not, it. Uh, not get it. Yeah. I, I do not want. Yeah. And I'll keep busting my ass yeah. to not get it. To do all the things to not get it. I lice all the shit out of the house tonight. Yeah, as he should. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Fuck that. No. Flamethrower. <laughs> Actually, pine saw. I used pine saw. So I pine sawed the house like crazy before my daughter and wife came home and before Chandler came in after work. Yeah, fuck so, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, if you, d- if you don't have any pine saw, you can be sure to wash your hands. Yeah, and wash your ass, please. Wear the mask. Get the jab. Return the cart. Check your oil, Tony. Check your oil, Tony. We'll catch you next week. We'll Take it easy. Kindness. Yeah. Oh, it. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do the kindness. You do the kindness. Oh, you do. The All kindness. right. I'll do the kindness. We'll catch you next week. Later.